If you're looking to write better cop characters, stick around because today I've got seven tips on how to write more convincing police officers. By the way, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm the author of Bad Parts, also the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. Let me say right up front that today I'm going to be focusing on the psychology of police officers. I'm not going to be focusing on things like police work or how to solve a murder or department hierarchies or anything like that. I'm strictly going to be focusing on the psychology of police officers so that you can write more authentic and interesting cop characters. And the reason why I chose to do this video is because I recently finished the book Emotional Survival for Law Enforcement. This is by Kevin Gilmartin. And it's a book that somebody recommended to me a few years ago. I forget who it was who recommended it to me, but they said, Brandon, you know, give this book a shot. It'll help you write better cop characters. And I read it and I was really impressed with it. It's an accessible book. There's a lot of great information in it. And today I want to share with you seven particular takeaways that I had from this book. And the first thing I want to talk about is the cynical worldview of cops. You often hear things like, oh, cops are cynical people, they don't trust anybody, things like that. And there's a reason behind this cynical worldview, and it's because cops are constantly being called to negative situations. Now, for instance, you or I, we might walk through a park five days of the week and nothing happens to us and we have a positive or a neutral outlook on that park. Cops, on the other hand, they might get called to that same park two or three times a week because of a drug bust, because of a mugging, because of an attempted rape, or something horrible along those lines. And because of that, the cops would have a cynical worldview of that park and maybe even parks in general. And the same thing happens with occupations. In the book, they mention things like scout leaders. You or I might hear the word scout leader and we might think, well, that's a pretty neutral or maybe a positive thing. But a cop, on the other hand, their previous interactions with scout leaders, maybe the, the past two or three times they've encountered a scout leader, was because they went to arrest one because of a, a molestation charge or something like that. So you have to keep these things in mind when you are writing your cop characters, that they do have a cynical worldview, but there is a reason behind it. And it's because they're constantly being drawn into negative situations. Second thing I want to talk about is the usage of the words bullshit and assholes. These words are a huge part of the cop's lexicon. While I was reading this book, I had a few laughs because of it, and there were sections of the book that talked about why cops use the word bullshit so much, and it has a lot to do with that cynical worldview with, that they have. And the thing is, anything that cops don't understand, or they hate, or they just don't have control over, those kind of things that cause social dilemmas, cops will refer to them as bullshit. You'll hear things like, oh, it's that administrative bullshit, or it's the computer training bullshit we had to do last week, or any any other bullshit, whatever's going on. And the thing is, the source of all the bullshit is the assholes. And assholes are people that cops don't trust. There can be assholes out on the streets, there can be assholes in the administration, but oftentimes you'll hear things like, oh well, you know, we had to deal with that computer training bullshit because the assholes in the administration are forcing it on us. Those two words, bullshit and assholes, are things you might want to consider putting into your cop's dialogue. My number three takeaway is hypervigilance. And hypervigilance was pretty much the main focus of the book. Once I got past the chapters on cynicism and bullshit and assholes, it really geared toward this hypervigilance, which is a major part of the cop's life while they're on duty. And what hypervigilance is, it's a state of seeing everything as potentially dangerous. Your senses are heightened, you're on high alert while you're on duty. The reds are redder, the blues are bluer, you're hearing everything around you, you're sensing everything around you. Everything comes alive when you're in a state of hypervigilance. For an average person, it would be like if we walked down down a dark alleyway at night. We would be we would be on edge, we'd be wondering oh, what's going on around us, we'd be checking over our shoulders, we'd be listening in close for anything that could potentially harm us. And that's how cops go through their daily lives while they're on duty. And the thing about hypervigilance, it, it has an almost drug-like high to it because you feel alive. And the catch with this is that once you're off duty, you crash. And this is what is called the hypervigilance roller coaster. Basically, when you're on duty, you're at the top of the roller coaster coaster and you're feeling good and you're feeling alive but once you get off duty everything crashes to the bottom and the thing is when cops go home they're in this off-duty state where they disengage with their family their friends their hobbies etc and it really just kind of sucks away at them it sucks away at their off-duty lives. And what they often do, they end up sitting in their chair in front of the TV and they just flip through channels. They're not really watching anything. They're just they're just in this, this opposite state of hypervigilance where they're really struggling and waiting to get back to work. 
Now, the number four thing I want to talk about is over-identifying as a cop. And this happens as a result of that hypervigilance roller coaster that I just talked about. Basically, what happens is that as cops disengage from their off-duty life, it causes them to over-identify with their role as a police officer. And this can be very dangerous because cops don't control their job. The administration controls their job. And if the administration, for instance, pulls them into a new role, or they transfer them to somewhere else, or they take them off a case, this can become a severe threat to the cop's sense of self. For instance, if you have a cop who is a dedicated SWAT team member, they're great at their job, they're doing all the right things, and then all of a sudden they get taken off the SWAT team for whatever reason, that kind of thing can have a huge impact on how they see themselves and how they see their, their administration, their agency, whatever it is. The number five thing I want to talk about is victim-based thinking. A lot of cops, what happens once they get pulled off the job of their dreams, they're happy on the SWAT team or wherever it is, and then management says, uh-uh, you're done there. We want you somewhere else. We need you in another department. What happens is that cops develop this victim-based thinking where they become consumed with thoughts of retribution and fairness and justice and how they can retaliate against management. And what can happen as a result of adopting this victim mindset is that cops can shift away from their core values towards situational values. In other words, they might have very good core values. They might believe that they need to be the best officer they can be for 100% of the time while they're on duty. But then all of a sudden, once the administration or the agency screws them over, then what happens is they start shifting toward situational values. They say things like, well, you know what? I'm not going to be the best cop I can be anymore because the agency screwed me. Or I'm going to take some of the money that we found at the drug dealer's house because the agency screwed me. Or I'm going to stop writing parking tickets because the agency screwed me. Or whatever it is. Basically, they might start blaming the agency for their bad behavior. And this is something you can use when you're working with character arcs in your stories. You might have a cop who at the very beginning of the story, maybe he's this great SWAT team member, he's this model member of the team, and then all of a sudden administration pulls him off the SWAT team, and then he starts engaging in bad behavior. And then it becomes the question of, will he grow toward becoming a stronger person? Will he grow toward becoming the type of cop he was at the very beginning of the story? Or will this be his downfall where he eventually becomes this dirty cop who, you know, engages in all the bad behavior, steals all the money, whatever it is. The number six thing I want to talk about is the reactive mindset. And this is pretty simple and straightforward. Basically, cops, what they do for a living, they are reacting to calls. They are responding to calls. They're responding to emergencies. And they do this all day long. They're reacting, reacting, reacting. So when they get home and they're off duty, all of a sudden it becomes difficult for them to make decisions. So that's something to think about with your characters. Maybe when they get home, they can't make any decisions at all. They can't decide what to have for dinner. They can't decide where they want to go on vacation this summer. They can't decide how to pack a suitcase for their vacation. Maybe they don't even know what to put in it because they can't make any choice at all. And then their spouse has to pack the case for them. And the final thing I want to talk about is that cops do control their off-duty lives. And they need to be proactive in their off-duty lives in order to offset that roller coaster that we talked about. And what being proactive means, it means scheduling time for family and friends and hobbies. It means setting aside time to go to your kid's basketball game or to hang out with your friends who you haven't seen in a while or to enjoy a hobby that you've gotten away from. And work may interfere with your plans, and that happens from time to time. And a lot of cops use this as an excuse. They say, ah, I'm not even going to bother setting plans, or I'm not going to bother, you know, scheduling my calendar because I just know that work's going to get in the way anyway. And while this may be true from time to time, work doesn't always get in the way. So it's something to keep in mind if you do have a cop character, maybe a cop who's really cynical, they may not even bother with making plans. But a cop who is more optimistic, they may mark off time on their calendar to spend time with the family or whatever it is. And then the last thing to keep in mind is that cops need to focus on what they can control in order to preserve their identity as a person. Earlier on, I mentioned that when they're on duty, they don't control everything. They only control a few things, and then the administration controls the rest. But when they're off duty, they do control their interactions with their family and their friends and their hobbies. So I hope this helps. And if you assholes are interested in picking up a copy of this book, I will link it in the description below. I'd highly recommend it. It's a short book, only about 140 pages, so you can probably whip through this one in a few sittings. I enjoyed it. I got a lot out of it and it was really accessible. You don't need to be a cop or a family member of a cop to really appreciate it. It's something that can help you with writing better characters. Question of the day, what is your favorite story with a cop as the main character? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of either one of my novels. Also, be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend. And as always, remember to keep on writing.